So let's talk about how to put together one of these frames. You've got a mold frame and you're ready to do your packing. The first thing you need to do is just really put a bunch of sand in your bottom layer. If you're doing a part that has one particular side, right, with detail and then one side with no detail, usually one side is flat and the other side is convex. Um, but sometimes you'll do something a little more complicated and that requires a lot of registration. So for the initial process, I think we're gonna cover something simple to understand and then we'll work our way into complexity. So all you need to do is fill this mold frame to the top with sand. And the problem with that is by the time you get all the sand in here, you're gonna have to come back and pack it down. So depending on what you have uh, for packing, usually a wood block works really well, or a wooden dowel. I like the wooden dowels because you can pack with the end like so. And then you can also roll. Um, the problem with rolling is sometimes if you're in a humid environment, it'll stick to your dowel and that's fine, but what you wanna make sure you're doing is getting everything packed down as tightly as possible because this sand and the rate at which it's packed is going to be the one thing protecting you from molten metal escaping your mold. So if you're not sure about your pack job, you want to be firm. And so you wanna do this on a surface that is relatively smooth and well supported uh, generally a tray is nice because it keeps all of your sand in one place, but it's got to be something that is a nice flat rigid thing. You don't want it to be too floppy. So don't get a, a cheap thin walled uh, polyethylene tray from like the grocery store. If it can bend or flex, you want to get something a little thicker or a little stiffer. doesn't matter which. But something relatively rigid. Aluminum cookie sheets work fabulous. So. I'm just rolling everything in, packing it down, and you wanna get it to the point where this entire section is flush, okay? So if you're having trouble getting it down there, you know, just keep at it. I know it's tricky, I know it's hard, but you wanna get this section nice and flat. And so you just keep packing until you go a little beyond the perimeter above the edge of that metal lip in the mold frame, right? So you're pushing as hard as you can over and over and making sure that everything is nice and packed, okay? And once you get it packed just beyond the surface, that's when you can scrape it flush, okay? A little bit more over here. Now you can take a metal scraper. You want it to be a flat material, and generally you want it to fit within. So when I design these, usually I'll cut them so they're the exact width of my frame. This one is slightly shorter, which means that when you go to rake, you've gotta come at a strange angle. And that's okay, you just gotta take it nice and slow. And then make sure you get your sand down to nice and flat. So in order to check that, your pack job is thorough and tight, and your material is smooth, you should be able to lift it off without worrying about sand coming out. Now, you don't wanna shake this violently, but you do wanna be able to move it without issue, okay? So we're gonna bring that to the camera, okay? You can see that we're a nice flat plane. Everything is firmly packed. It's even smooth on the back. So we're gonna clear the material below because when you set it down, if you set it down on like a large object, it can actually break all of that hard packed sand you put in there. So now we're gonna put our mold frame back on 
and just finger tight with one of the, the nuts to make sure it stays in place. And we want to add some separating compound. And you can use talc and a sock, that's pretty common, or you can just brush it on. I usually am very liberal with my talc because I want my part to separate. You just want it to be white, okay? If you see some color, that's fine. It's not a major issue. So now we're gonna take our part, right, which is the star that's got the draft, and we're just gonna place it in the mold where we want it. And now this is the tricky part because when it's in your mold, you're going to have to make sure that you have enough access to your sprue, right? So the, the gate is going to be here where metal will pour in to the star. And we wanna make sure that the star itself can actually have the metal come in and not have any issue, right? We want it to fill the entire part without clogging. Okay, so now I'm just dusting the top with some more talc. And here's the tricky part. Once you have your part in, I tend to take the big compressed chunks and I just sand it over a grating, okay? And that gives you a really ultra fine sand that's falling on the top. And this takes longer, but you're gonna continue to do this until your entire part is covered with a fine powder. So rather than make you watch that entire step, we're gonna switch to time lapse, and then I'll cut back to regular video once we have enough powder covered. Okay, so now that we've covered everything in a nice fine powder, we don't have to worry about whether or not we'll capture our details. So we're gonna take the remainder of the clay, right, or the sand, and we're just gonna fill the mold gently. Okay, we're just dropping little bits on. We're no longer taking those big chunks and ramming them down. We're just taking a small amount of the clay and filling it to the top. And we're gonna go beyond the top because we know once that sand has been grated into a fine powder, it's a lot lighter. It's gonna take more volume to actually fill the mold. And what we wanna know is we have enough when we start compressing to get exactly what we need in terms of packing and shape. So at this point, what I'll do is I'll take my scraping sheet and I'll just gently compress down And then I'll add some more sand. And you don't want to push so hard that you feel your sheet metal bending, just enough to know you're getting a nice soft pack. And what that does is that packs the sand around your master part to establish the details that you want to keep, okay? So we're just gonna push that down, boop, like so. And now that we're getting some resistance, we can switch to our dowel and you're gonna see that it goes well below the perimeter again. And so then we can add more sand and continue the compression step, okay? But at this point, it's pretty straightforward. Just pack and go, just pack and go. We're gonna add some more sand. And as you get all the details covered, goes faster and faster. So there's no rush, just know once you've got that, that smooth powder coat, you don't have to worry as much about compression. Just that top layer needs to be the fine stuff to capture all of your details if you're doing very ornate, drafted objects that you wanna keep all those details, the powder is essential. If you're looking for that rough antique feel, something, you know, early Bronze Age, it's okay to rush it. But if you want to have nice refined parts, you're going to have to take time and sip that powder with the screen until you cover your part completely. Okay. So then at this point, 
We're ready to just scrape a little off the top. And the sheet metal acts as a little shear, peeling it all away nicely. There we go. So we can then take our part, move all of our sand aside, remove the nut, and then lift our part out, and you'll see the master part is registered in there. So if you want to remove that part, you just need to have something that's coming in from the gate, where your metal is gonna flow straight to your part. So, I'm going to use a small metal tool that allow me to pull my part out. And don't reach in there to grab it with your hands. At this point, it should be loose enough to just fall into your hand, okay? If you've packed it correctly, that's all that's necessary. And so at this point, if you want to do anything else, all you need to do is take your part and carve out the gate so metal flows directly to your part. And the trick here is you wanna sweep away from your part so no excess sand falls in to your final part, right? And you wanna make sure that there's enough of an opening for the metal to flow all the way through your part, okay? And then we're gonna talk about venting. And the thing about all these little points that you can see in the mold is they can collect air and trap them. So oftentimes what you'll do is you'll take a tool and you'll just add a little blind vent, right? You'll cut a trough so that your material can go somewhere, right? So I'm gonna to switch to a different tool and just cut my trough. And it's important to just gently press and pull out. What you don't wanna do is what happened here with a slight shift because that'll leave more sand texture. So just gentle pressure and pull, and a gentle lift, okay? And so you can cut those lines as deep as you want, and generally, if it's a good casting day, you'll even see where they were. And if it's not a ca good casting day, you won't know they're there, but your part will be perfectly fine, okay? So there we go. And I always tap the side of my mold to make sure anything loose has fallen. Because when you go to ram it back up, the last thing you want to find out is there's a new chunk in the detail that you spent all that time carving. And so we have some more debris here on the back side. And we're just going to make sure that our mouth is open and our parts locked together. And this one is ready to cast.